Let's get to our newsmaker this hour, Philip Swagos, director of the Congressional, uh, Congressional Budget Office, the CBO. Great to have you in uh, this morning. Great. Thanks very much, Joe. So the, the, I guess that uh, the administration or, or supporters of the administration would say, look, deficits are, are something we need to deal with eventually, but we need to grow this economy first, and it makes everything easier to deal with if we grow it. And, and people like new highs in the stock market. There's a wealth effect. People, it, it helps consumer confidence. There's a lot of things that it does, but isn't this a time when you should start actually looking at the deficit and looking at entitlements? There, there are some smart people that think this is the next major thing we have to deal with is public debt, not, not, not in 2007, the private debt. A public debt is going to come back to haunt us. Isn't this now when we should be addressing this? Yeah, I mean, that's the challenge. As, uh, as you said, we have a, a good economy and a, a very strong labor market, and yet the deficit is wide, and we projected to get wider, a trillion dollars a year, you know, basically into the future. Uh, right, the sun is shining. Now's the time to, to look at our roof and start to fix it. Yet, we know how much is discretionary and how much is non-discretionary, and there doesn't seem to be any... Uh, appetite in, in, with the president for, for dealing with the entitlement issue or, or uh, the non-discretionary spending. You know, fortunately, we have time, and we, we see that interest are rates you, are low. But that's what I keep hearing. Right. What, what it, 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 so we get four yeah. years to, to grow. I it, it, if he's reelected, he's suddenly going to tack and, and, and then look at Social Security, look at Medicare, because he's promising that he won't. You know, it, it's such a big challenge that we need, we need all of society together, right? The entire political system and, and everyone together in, you know, willing to take on uh, mandatory spending, the entitlements. And that it can't be done overnight. We have to give people time to adjust, you know, whether it's changes to Social Security, Medicare, or other programs. And, and so it's something that has to be done over time. But for, fortunately, with interest rates low, that suggests that we do have time to but do But, Phil, this. we're not talking about tackling it anytime soon. And the Republican Party that we've always heard this from and always expected it would be there, if it's not being led by that, what, how, do, how does it ever come about? How do we do this early enough to make sure that the changes won't be even more draconian? Yeah, I know that, that is the challenge, exactly, that if we wait longer, then the, the, the changes that are needed are, are more difficult and in some sense less fair, right? The people today are excused from their share of the burden and there's more of the burden on people in the future. You know, it, it's a social problem, it's a political right. problem, it's an And why are you problem. so convinced that, that rates are going to stay where they are and that therefore we have time? Because uh, my great worry, you lived through the financial crisis mm -hmm. uh, of 2008, right in the midst of it, is that confidence doesn't evaporate over years or months. It happens in, you know, days and hours and minutes. And if it actually were to really happen, mm -hmm. you'd have a real problem. Yeah, so we have a benign outlook, right? Growth goes goes down a little bit but but stays pretty good but that's the risk as you highlight that confidence can change and if it does if our debt level is higher and that's when interest rates spike right it, it, we're more vulnerable in a sense so i saw something in the in the notes that just caught my eye I mentioned this to andrew earlier and that was some of the corporate receipts were lower than projected by the cbo after the cut in, in corporate taxation and you said well if we had known what we knew about corporate profits over the past year, we wouldn't have thought that receipts would be as high. Well, the, the cut in corporate taxes was supposed to boost profits. So you're saying, well, profits are lower, so we didn't get as much in receipts. Well, that was the whole point of the corporate tax cut in the first place. Why, why didn't you get, why didn't you hit the nut? Why didn't corporations after tax make more money based on the corporate tax cut? Uh, yeah, so, so they did. So we saw profits go up after the tax cut and the economy was strengthened, especially in the first half, half of the year before the increases in tariffs set in around the middle of 2018. So this is a tariff what, story. Yeah, so, so a little bit what's going on in 2018, in the middle of it is, is a tariff story. The, the change in our um, estimate related to changes in data, this is the corporate profits were lower before the tax cut than we understood. But it goes out 10 years uh, and it's gonna be significantly lower uh, Mm -hmm. We cut corporate taxes, and people go, oh, my God, but now corpor corporations are paying less in taxes. It's like, we cut corporate taxes. <laughs> yes, that's sir. why. They, tax they are cut, paying less. That's tax the way, cut yeah, taxes. that's, that's what that's it right. was about. So I understand that. But then again, you did make a certain assumption, and I hear rumblings that the White House is maybe responding to some of the optics by saying that there might be a minimum tax. I mean, even Jeff Bezos' company oh, might end up. Yeah, yeah, even Jeff Bezos' company might have to pay a dollar or two in, in taxes on the, the, the hundred gazillion they make. Yeah. 
Is that true? Is that being considered a minimum tax, like a, an alternative minimum tax for, for corporations? I mean, that is, we, we, we've seen reports of that. Um, you know, at CBO, of course, we'll analyze whatever Congress. Uh, puts, this is coming from forward. Congress, you mean? Uh, the reports I've seen have come from the White House. From the White and House. And we, you know, we, we essentially look at what Congress does. And the, the Joint Committee on Taxation analyzes the, uh, the, the tax proposals with, along with us. But, Phil, it, the, Willie Sutton, you go where the money is. The, the real money's not with corporations. It's with individuals. And if we're not going to be able to deal with non-discretionary items, you're going to need to raise the revenue side, which Andrew's always talking about, through, through something. Uh, through, uh, if you can't do spending then the only way to close it is for additional revenue. You think growth uh, in the economy is going to generate enough individual tax receipt growth where you, you won't have to raise taxes somewhere? No, that's the challenge. Is that we have a, a pretty benign outlook. Growth continues, and the deficit remains wide. And so it's got to come somewhere. Policy has to change, whether it's on the spending side or the tax side. You don't no. even need to be here. Go. Uh, I'm it's, here. You're doing my work for me. Yeah. I like it. And you did mine with Nell. <laughs> so it's really weird, isn't it? Fair trade. Yeah. All right. I don't know about that. but yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Um, well, we talked about it off camera. So... In the second Trump, if there were a second Trump administration, I don't know if you saw the debate, but maybe there will be one. Uh, but if there were a second uh, Trump administration, would there be any uh, increase in revenue somehow? Any, 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 somewhere, uh, carried interest? I don't know. Is there anything the president would consider looking at there? Um, well, one thing to keep in mind is that after 2025, all the personal tax rates go up, right? That was in the 2017 tax law, is that those, those rates are... So, only so he would let that happen? So we, you know, obviously we'll, we'll wait till Congress uh, acts, but there's a, so there's a tax increase is, is programmed into current law. But I would think that one of the proposals that, um, that, that maybe Trump would make in, in Congress would be to extend those or to make them permanent. Wouldn't that be part of the agenda? You know, we have to see. They could make what, a choice not to do that? The, in, the current law is that tax rates on the individual side you go up. I can't imagine. Can you where where they wouldn't try where to make they that per, where they'd let it go where where he would preside over the the individual rate going up? I can't imagine. Right, and then there's business taxes on the, right. the R and E credit, um, uh, expensing yeah. other things that go away. So tax policy will still be on the agenda over the next. couple Are months. we going to be okay or not, Phil? In terms of the deficit, you, you're not making me feel that much better about no, it. Right I, now. You know, we, we have time. Like I said, it's not. It doesn't, it's not something that has to happen this year. And what we saw earlier this year as the coronavirus got worse yes. and the concerns got worse, our interest rates went down. Treasury yields went down. So the rest of the world still sees us as the, the place to be. It's just over time. Uh, but over time, when nobody on either side is ever suggesting we ever address this. We, we are here to support the Congress when and if they, uh, they turn to fiscal adjustment. All right. Philip Swagel, CBO. Thank you. Thank good, you. Good, good, good to have you on the set today.